plus or minus half train but it's not totally empty but we must be seen to be improving again congratulations to APC for this um, this showing and um, congratulate every other party and congratulate the whole of Nigeria okay all right we have to uh, leave it here now uh, we thank you so much Aki Fatunke for coming on the program all of your insight is really acknowledged and we thank you so much for your wisdom and insight Mr. Wilcox, we thank you as well for your contribution here has really added a lot of value to It's always my pleasure. Thank, exactly you. thank you. Thank you very much. I was just going to say, at least that maybe when next I see you, I'd like to see you in local content. <laughs> Alista, Wilcox are English. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. There's a middle name. There's a middle name. Ah, okay. <laughs> so he has balanced it somehow. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, just to uh, bring you up to speed, 11 a.m. tomorrow, INEC is going to commence uh, the reeling out of more uh, numbers from uh, votes from, or results rather, from various states. We started with EKT right now, and uh, you can see the results on the screen there. That is what has been announced, and his, the process has been adjourned till tomorrow, 11 a.m. All right. I'm I'm going to hand over to my colleagues now, Precious Amayo in Abuja, as well as uh, Nifemi Oguntoi. They are there at the center, and uh, of course, I, I wonder what's going on there right now. I know how uh, the, how the frenzy in the air, how people are preparing, looking forward anxiously and patiently and enthusiastically uh, to the reading out of the results. Precious and Nifemi. Absolutely, Mike. Nigerians are waiting. Uh, it, it's been a long-awaited result, but right here at the International Conference Center, the National Coalition Center of the INEC, uh, of course, um, INEC officials have left the hall. Uh, many of um, the diplomatic community, the uh, CSOs, foreign and domestic observers are also making their way out of the hall, but journalists are still here. Absolutely. We don't seem to have a place to go. We have to no, wait we it have out. To wait. So because we, we have to then feed every other person back. Indeed. So what was said here today. So what we're doing now is more like feedback. This is just like a recap of what was done here today. Indeed. Um, but it, it was quite interesting to see that the kind of people who were present here today. I know you've mentioned yes. the you've mentioned the um, the domestic and foreign observers, but we also had um, chairmen of electoral commission uh, in commission in, in other African countries. For example, yeah. Ghana, Gambia, Syria. Known, um, Benin Republic, they Absolutely. were all here, covering the, the East, West, and, and Southern Africa. There were observers from the Commonwealth, the yes. African Union, the European Union. We spoke with the European yes. Union chief observer yesterday. Absolutely. And it's quite important to also note that this is where it all happens. This is where INEC declares the result. Uh, we're expecting results from 36 states plus the FCT. We have done one out of 36 plus the FCT. One would have thought that the FCT is closer. That's where the results should come in first. But we also noticed that yeah. the election went all through the night in some parts of Abuja. And that perhaps is why well, the delay has tarried. I mean, the result has tarried for this long. But one thing is certain, INEC says it will recover 11 a.m. tomorrow. Whether or not we're going to have more state coalition officers by that time, that, that's something we'll have to wait. Yes, but let, let's, also, let's also stress that perhaps one of the reasons why we're experiencing this um, delay, as in where, or, or the fact that we have to wait yes. for more uh, resident electoral com commissioners and their returning officers to come to uh, Abuja, yes. is because, first of all, um, some, some, in some places, the, the voting started state states um, it went through the night Indeed. and some had to vote today absolutely and we also know that there are different levels of, of um, collation for example you have to go through the the what there's a what level where you have to collate at the one level there's a polling unit to the one level and um, from the what level you then move to the local, to government, local government, government area and then you move to the state level which Indeed. is what a lot of states are now doing i think a lot absolutely. of states are at that level before they will come to Abuja. and what it means also is that those uh, areas where elections were suspended or postponed rather till today they will now be at that level 
of counting the perhaps of polling units and then from there, like you said, from the ward areas, local government areas. And so it means that we're going to wait a little longer to see results coming in from those. But we have the result from it to State. However, it's Absolutely. important to note out because we're concerned about the voter turnout for this election. Uh, it's it's been it's stayed at 35 percent in the past two elections, and Nigerians came into the election with so much enthusiasm. Yes. And we were, but we well, we're still hopeful we don't have all the results. This is yet. just one. This is just one out of 36. But when you look at the Ekiti election. It's just 31% voter turnout. Yeah, so let's just let, give people the figure. Um, for those who think see, see, see that particular announcement, um, the total registered voter in a uh, state stood at 987,647. Um, the total um, accredited voters, which is where you, know, you sort of saw that drop, was 315,058. And that's where, you know, if you do the math, it sort of amounts to about 31,000. Uh, it, it, it means therefore that over 500,000 registered voters who registered to vote in AGT did not come out for accreditation. Yes, and then we also saw that the total of valid votes um, stood at 308,171, and total rejected votes um, was 6,101. So, which means that you know, uh, you know how they. That, that voter education that Heineck always does, that when you say, look, when you print, not fold, so it doesn't seem there, um, all of that might have resulted in the um, rejected votes. And so, but the, 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 the issue here, which is the fact that, look, out of my, almost a million registered voters, yeah. almost a million, yeah. and you only had about 315,000, just plenty of 315,000 coming out to vote. And it shows you that maybe when we see all the states, we will see the, 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 the difference between the registered voters and those who actually were accredited to vote, maybe in all of that, in some states would be better than this. But you know, we want to see how that enthusiasm we've always talked about reflected in the in the uh, turnout. Hopefully, when we get figures from other states, um, like you said, we probably would see um, that um, there would be an improvement. Nigerians are really hoping that there would be, because what we've had is we've had um, we've had majority of those who come out to vote decide our leaders, not. A, not, yeah, not, not, not necessarily the majority of Nigerians or those who are registered to vote. So uh, we're taking a look here right now as we're uh, looking at um, how how um, apprehensive many Nigerians have been concerning this election. We spoke with um, an INEC national commissioner earlier as to why has there been a slow update of results um, on their IREF their, their IRF portal and he was saying that well election, I mean, that process has to end first in those states before it moves up there in the cloud. Uh, and, you know, there is a back end to this story. There's a track record. We've seen INEC perform excellently well in this regard in all of those staggered elections where we had close to 90% of those elections uploaded on the portal as of like 10 p.m. election yes. day. But you might also want to consider that this is perhaps this the is first time. <laughs> this is the so first time it's yes. happened on a national so scale. And if you also look at the scale, because um, when you look at the fact that we have over 136,000 polling units, yes. and if, for example, you have about, about 1,000 or 2,000 polling units concluding their election at the same time, for example, and all trying to get on the iron, I don't know, you know, the capacity where you, you sometimes when you're watching videos on a particular platform, you know, you know that you have a lot of viewers, it starts to buffer, and it takes a lot of time before you can watch. And maybe that was also the problem. But we will have, again and again, Anika said, look, when there is a need for briefing on the conduct of the election, we'll not on the collation yes. that they would brief in another, you know. You know, the question so, of whether that website has capacity to mm. take, you know, more visit was addressed prior to uh, um, the opening of the collation center. And I recall that the INEC chairman did say that they have expanded the capacity to take 200 million users at a time. I believe that after this exercise, we're going to review how solid that was and whether that indeed hold water. Uh, but one thing is certain that election has held in the majority states of Nigeria. However, how the conduct went is now a subject of review, particularly yes, where you consider late deployment of resources in some part of the state. And, and we know that, if, you know, both domestic and foreign observers have said by tomorrow they're going to release their preliminary reports. They did. And in those preliminary reports, we're going to see how, because they were the ones who actually observed in the election. So we're going to see what they thought of it um, in terms of voter turnout, in terms of how, how the viewers performed, in terms of logistic, logistics and how our next time we're able to get to the 
putting in some time in terms of security as well and how other people are abided by the uh, the electoral act and so all of those issues we will soon hear a lot of pre preliminary briefings tomorrow by domestic and um, um, foreign observers but i just wanted to mention earlier because we were talking about the weight we know that the statement was released earlier by the police um, force and they are saying look people who are putting unofficial results out there should stop doing that because it can actually so they are advising that people stop putting out on official reasons. Apart from bringing criminal, it, it, it has the capacity to heat up the party. Absolutely. It, it's okay if you are if you vote in your polling unit where everyone counted together and the result was made open. But I think it's important that Nigerians, you know, express some caution, you know, from just picking figures online and share it because INEC holds that exclusive right of um, collating this result and also announcing it officially and that's perhaps the only way you can be sure that you are spreading the right information you know the truth is Nifeme, you can only be in, if you're a voter you can only be in one polling unit at a time you can only vote in one polling unit which means that all you know it was happened in your polling unit you're not even allowed to be in another polling unit according to any guidelines once you're done all you can do is wait for counting of, 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 of um, the votes in your polling unit and then you go home. So which means you only have access to one result sheet and that's from your polling unit. So where are the, when you start to put out you know, results from other polling units, one wonders you know, how, how you've got them and if you've authenticated them. And the only body that is saddled, or agency that is saddled with the responsibility of announcing official and authenticating results is INEC. And so I think that we all have to be patient you know, for INEC to, 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 to begin to release this you know, earlier, uh, prior to, um, just at the point where the INEC chairman was um, declaring uh, the National Coalition Center officially open, he talked about the procedure and ground rules. And one of it is the fact that after results are being received from the state coalition officer, you'll find out that there is some level of comparison that takes place. Uh, what figures are you giving? Does it tally with what we have here? And there's a lot of, um, you, you know, vetting that takes place because uh, absolutely. you submit the summary of results, they also check the summary of the registered voters, the accredited voters. Were cancellations? Were there cancellations? Where, where, you know, where, were there areas where elections did not even take place Indeed. at all? How does that affect the general election results That's in right. that state? Those are, all of those things are put, are put into consideration before you know, the, the, the final results. There's a measure of proving that takes place here that you probably cannot do. We've been there, we saw how this yes. particular negative result was proved. Indeed. I mean, for those who watch, you always also see that you know, there's a lot of probing, you're right, that goes into you know, as, you know, certifying the, that particular result from that state. All right, so the question is how long more? Uh, we asked uh, the first cousin Okoye. He, he couldn't give a precise answer to that as to how long more before Nigerians can hear the official cumulative result of the presidential election and have a president elect return. But one thing is certain that um, it might take longer than we had in 2019, given what is currently playing out. But already, we understand that coalition, coalition is taking place in some states of the yes, federation, uh, particularly in places where uh, election were postponed to today. Uh, we're also, you know, finding out from INEC what their preliminary observation has been for this election. They have nothing to say yet, but they seem to be very I, I, proud. INEC cannot be a judge, a judge in his own case. Yes, so they cannot but, be an observer but case. they have, they have um, personnel on the field. Uh, especially when you ask questions as to how did the beavers work this time because there was a mock accreditation exercise uh, um, and it came into this election with a lot of confidence behind that machine and they are still holding on to it that it has worked and there is no alternative to it moving forward particularly with the 2022 and, 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 with, and i think it's, it's been more of a very mixed mixed review if you listen to nigerians and i'm not even talking about Domestic, even for domestic observers, because the foreign observers have been very careful, you know, speaking on issues like that. But the domestic observers have said, look, it was it is mixed review. In some, there were places where it actually worked and what you know. I mean, we spoke to our correspondent yesterday, our foreign affairs correspondent Moyo, who said it took her less than two minutes to vote. But there are also people who said we, they had to wait for a while. So it's it's it's, it's mixed review. But eventually, like I said, we're going to hear about we're going to hear preliminary reports from um, foreign and domestic observers from tomorrow and so we'll see how what they thought about how the, the, the performance
The Beavers is considered a game changer in this election. INEC is very proud of it. And they have uh, said no going back. And they have said no going back. Of course, they are backed by the law in that regard. Yeah. And also, we see that, um, or like a previous election where there is the alternative of the incidents form, when the machine doesn't work, this time you get a replacement. We are even told that the Beavers has now become the target of thuggery. The new ballot box. The new ballot box to, to be snatched. To be but the good is also that INEC reported that in those places where uh, the machines were stolen, or missing, there was, a replacement. there was a replacement. And that's also good news, particularly when you consider the fact that in areas where violence were recorded, uh, we're told that security operators in some areas intervened and election continued. In areas where election could not continue, INEC said that it was suspended, I mean, it was postponed to this morning. Absolutely. And that's the thing, you know, because the INEC chairman has, has always, and we'll, we'll see how well he keeps to that promise. Uh, but he, he has always said, look, no one will be disenfranchised in this particular election. It's something he's always said. But at the end of it all, because we know that, um, because Mara Mohammed was saying yesterday that in the IDP camps, they didn't have any polling units. And so it, that's another issue. And as we begin to get in the reviews and reports from everyone, we'll see how, whether anyone was actually disenfranchised. But they have tried in, in that regard to ensure that in places where voting did not take place or started late, that people are allowed to go through the night. Some even voted today. And so it, it is, I mean, it, it's, it's a process, Absolutely. you know, it, it's a process. One of the things, one of the things I've always said is that look, Nigeria used to be the pool bed, pool bed in, in, in West Africa. We've seen a lot of pools in West Africa recently. And so this election is very important it we is. Need to show the rest of West Africa it that is. look, um, democracy is important and we've continued to do that. It's been an unbroken democracy. Um, in, in the past 24 years. We have the numbers, we have the rich history. It's the seventh consecutive uh, general election. INEC says that the numbers are huge. We possibly have the highest voter register across the continent. And um, election here, we are told, is like the whole West Africa and some parts of Central Africa hold the election. That's why you see that um, all of the foreign observers are here. The world is watching. And if, even, and even the so uh, chairman of INEC commissions in other African countries have come to observe as well. Absolutely, they are. Uh, I mean, if you, you take a country like Malawi, for instance, I mean, you consider the number of people in that country compared to Nigeria. The Africans, many African countries have to our, learn our how to start voting population Nigeria. in Nigeria is, yes. is sometimes, is, is way more than so, uh, its population in some countries. Absolutely. And so it shows you that, look, if we can manage a successful electoral process, a lot of other, I mean, it, will, it will become a source of encouragement for a lot of other African countries. That's right. And then, you know, citizens will able to be able to demand for democracy because they've seen that it works. And that's why perhaps, it, maybe this is one of the reasons we're called the giant of Africa. Because if it works here, yeah, then people will know that other African countries will know that it can be done. It's not tidy yet. And we also perhaps cannot give a very holistic um, review of how the process went at the cross board. But one thing is certain that um, there were reported cases of late, um, late arrival of materials and personnel for this election. There's also yes. perhaps um, a situation that where... One, that was one of the very big issues. Yes, which, which INEC dealt with in previous elections, well, particularly in off-cycle elections. This but is I a, think this is people, a massive oh, Sorry one. to interrupt, but I think that people continue to wonder why logistics um, every, in every election cycle continues to be involved. We spoke to um, one of one of the one of the observers we spoke to yesterday. You know, said something in the regard that look, INEC is supposed to have its vendors. If you have your vendors that you use every election cycle, why is logistics a problem? You know that you're going to liaise with the transporting unions, so you could you could do that way before um, beforehand, just so you do not have these kind of issues. And there are areas where you know there are river and areas you need boats to get that. Some of this logistics can be put in place. And you can also prepare for contingencies in case, you know, it, it does happen, just so that, you know, this kind of logistics problems are not something... I think seem to have a few answers to that. I remember that uh, Professor Sokoye mentioned that in some areas where there were, you know, pre-planned arrangements for transportation, a few security challenges arose that made some people Absolutely. back out and opt out of the plan. Mm -hmm. In some places, then, uh, NYC, NYC members, uh, members also opt you know, did not, did just, just did not consider the process. But I'm not, I'm not sure that. that in every case. We know that security also played a role. For example, in about seven local governments in Imo State, there were security challenges. And so, and it was wondering whether it should hold elections there or not. And then they said that, you know, whenever elections start, then it's going to start, but they're going to ensure that everyone 
everyone left. So it was also Benin Kebi, but Benin Kebi. Eventually, it was able to hold elections. Um, there were places in Bayel side, but 141 polling units in about four uh, uh, four wards. Also, you know, having challenge of obviously security challenges. Eventually, those elections have now held held in those particular particular wards. So yes, there were security challenges.